In this video, I'd like to show you how to analyze and report NMR data. For the analysis and the processing, I'm using MNOVA. There is a written instruction on Blackboard available, however, that's of a slightly older version. The NMR spectrum here, I have opened the file already, is uh, of relatively low resolution because it's a single pulse experiment, but it's absolutely fine for our purpose. So. I'm using Camtasia as a software to video my, my activities here. This makes that some of the commands don't work very perfectly, so don't wonder if things are a little bit dodgy here and there. Nevertheless, let's go ahead. Here we see the full spectrum, and the very first thing we have to do is to set the reference. Either we are looking for a TMS signal, that should be around zero, However, I know I haven't been using any TMS, so there's no chance to find it. Um, the other alternative is to look for the non-deuterated part of the NMR solvent. I've been using chloroform here, so uh, CHCl3 I should be able to see. At the moment, the peak is a little bit small, and I see also it's not at the right place. It should be around 7.3 or 7.25 somewhere. So how do I do this? First of all, I have to zoom my signal. I can do this either by using here one of those icons. I prefer to hit the Z button until we get a magnifying glass as a mouse cursor. And now I hold down the left mouse button and just release it. And then I use my scrolling wheel from the mouse in the middle to get a larger peak or taller peak. And then I repeat my zooming a couple of times. So now I want to set the reference. That should work either with the letter L. This doesn't work while Camtasia is on. It obviously helped if I clicked. That's normally not the case. So how do I go ahead here? I'm looking here for solvents. And here I have to select the correct solvent. Chloroform 7.26. Click this one and say OK. And then you see that the whole anima spectrum is adjusting here. So now I would like to see the full spectrum again. Click on full spectrum. Peaks are too big, so I use a mouse pointer. Okay, now I have a nice spectrum. I see that I have a couple of peaks here around two. And then I have loads of peaks between about 3.7 and 5.5. So the next thing I'd like to do is to do some integration. So I will zoom again, letter Z, and zoom this area in and make my peaks a bit taller. And if I want to do an integration, I have to hit the letter I and my mouse pointer turns into um, an integral icon. The integration works exactly in the same way as zooming, so left mouse button, holding it down and then just dragging along. At the moment, I have a bit too uh, far too many significant figures. So, how can I do this one? I can just do a right, right click somewhere on the spectrum, click on properties, select integrals, and say I want to see only one decimal, and say apply or OK, one or the other. What else do I want to do? Ah, yes. Some of you may want to use one of those icons. If you want to use those, then make sure that you select manual. Otherwise, you get auto detect regions. And this requires quite a bit of knowledge before you know which ones you have to delete afterwards or not. So the manual version is uh, the safer one. You can also go here on the, the menu analysis there you find exactly the same thing, integration, and there you go for manual, and there you see the letter I. So I'm happy here with my integrations. Now I could either deci decide to see the full spectrum, or I can hold down the left mouse button, and you see my hand here is uh, turning into a mouse pointer, and just drag the spectrum along here, and then I come to these big, big needles here, which are some signlets. Um, I want to have them a bit further apart. So this is, I press the letter Z. So now I can zoom again. I'm happy now. Go back to my integration and drag along. It 
So now I have done the integration for the spectrum and you see all those singlets, they are roughly corresponding to three protons. Don't report 2.9 protons or 3.1. That's just within the arrow. Here is a little bit of mess behind, uh, below it, a bit of noise. So I don't worry too much about this one. So there we have all threes. Have a look at the other part. So you see, this can be a bit tedious. I can always go back here to the full screen view and then hit the letter Z again and then zoom in again. So what do we see here? One, one, that's also one, also one, two here, one there. The next thing I would like to do is to do the peak picking. So I can use uh, the letter um, K, if I remember, yes. Um, then I get a cross here again. The important bit now is that we make sure that we keep with the horizontal line high above the baseline that we don't get all these tiny little peaks in but also low enough that we actually get hold of the peaks so we need a threshold line so if I go here I can sample select those peaks and you see I got only the peaks here in the top here we see clearly a triplet so here it's quite easy see you get three figures up there I can either go peak by peak I can also go and select two peaks in one go. And now I obviously want to have my singlets there as well. So here it would be very dangerous to go too low with the threshold. I may have to make sure that I go to the top of the signals and then I get my one, two, three, four, five signals. For my reporting I only need two decimals so I would like to change the properties for the peak picking to two um, to two decimals. So I go into properties, look for peaks and then I say I want to have only two decimals. Apply this you see it goes down to two. It might be that you find certain numbers too small. Let's say here these 2.5, 2.4 that is too small or you, you think maybe my numbers here are too big. This can be changed in properties. So for example for general I can change it by going into the shell. Maybe I want to have a different color here for all my lines. I can select a different font if I prefer. I can change the size. Apply. Have a look what we get now. Oh, here it's changed. There it changed a little bit. Not sure whether I really like this one. Maybe I just go backwards. Okay. This is part number one. What I've done now, I have been uh, processing the NMR spectrum manually. Now I would like to go back to my complete spectrum. The next step is that we would like to do the coupling constants. So how do we do this one? Let's select uh, a signal. So I'm going for zoom first of all and select one of those. Here we have a nice signal. Um, I see already that's a DD system but how can I f figure out about the coupling constant and everything? So I can go here for the analysis, multiplet analysis and I need to go again for the manual or I can hit the letter J. As I said, this doesn't always work here. So, so the zooming happens exactly in the same way as uh, the, the assignment of the coupling constant happens exactly in the same way as previously by just holding down the left mouse button and then um, moving it to the right hand side. The information you get here is um, that the signal system is just called A. It will go through the alphabet and the signal shape is a DD system and this 5.4 is just giving you the chemical shift. So it gives you the shift from the center of the signal. So it's not a coupling constant yet. So we will repeat this process for every single signal. So here we have our triplet. So it's a triplet and the chemical shift of this signal is 5.3 with one decimal. If you get two decimals you have 
So I'll do this for all signals now. So here we have a DD system. This is one signal. We can see this clearly by the signal, by the integral here. So you see the small integral says 1.07 on this 0.9. It depends a bit on how far we have stretched the different lines here. So the center of this peak is at 5.0 and it's recognized as a DD system. I never know what's better to zoom everything in. So here we have a, another system. So that yeah, we double it. Center of the peak is 4.6. Oops, that I didn't want to do. Move to the next signal. I think sometimes it's really more convenient to just use that one and just redo the zooming. So here we have now two rather complex signals. So I can have both in one screen here. So I'm going for the letter J again. So it's a bit harder to see who belongs to the signal, whether this one belongs to it or not. Um, just have a look here. At the moment it's, it declares this one as a multiplet. That's two protons and it's possibly quite a good analysis for our purpose. Then here the last signal that is recognized as a, a TD system, the triplet of a doublet. And last but not least, oh, we have this full spectrum again, zoom in. These ones here are all signal, sig singlets, so no coupling constants for those. You see, singlet for every single peak. We don't worry too much here about these small peaks. This is just a little bit of impurities and a bit of noise. So by this we have now taken out all the relevant data from this NMR spectrum. Now we want to report it. The NMR software can do a lot for you, however you need your brain in the moment. So we can go for a report. We want to have the multiplets as a, as a range. No, we, yeah, we want to have them as a range. Um, here we can select the journal. Maybe we want to have an RSC journal. Then report coupling constants. Reduce coupling constant list. Yes, that we want to do as well. That is not relevant for you. Shift number of decimals. Two is fine. The J numbers, one decimal is also fine. Okay, now we see that here suddenly we get a new window and there we can see all the data and then I will come back to you to this information up there.